And please welcome your first speaker, the very funny Mr. Seth Herzog! What's up, Jews? We are on the Upper West Side, so I figure we have this wrapped up. Now, in the very Upper West Side, too. Like, the real part. Um, now, I know there are a lot of Jews here, but I don't know how many of you really know the Hanukkah story and all the details. It's a great story. It's an amazing story. The kind of story that lends a great holiday, a real holiday. The Christmas story is like another Jew was born. <laughs> Yay. And born in a very mysterious way. Girl was a virgin, married to a dude, hadn't had sex yet, but somehow she got knocked up. Oh, God did it. And she stuck to the lie to this day. It's the greatest lie ever sold, and we still believe it. Now, the Hanukkah story, which happened a good 175 years before that non-event they call Christmas, it's a super story. It takes place, let me bring you back to Jerusalem, 175 BC. The whole area is being taken over by the Greeks. They run the whole Middle, Middle East, but their empire's falling, falling apart, they're feeling it, they're feeling the strain, you know, you can't really have, like, a massive takeover in those days. There was very little media at the time. Like, very little internet. You know, just dial-up. And, and so the Greeks were feeling themselves, their powers slipping away. So Antiochus, who was the king of the Greeks at the uh, time, came to um, um, our fair town of... Um, um, Jerusalem, and he killed the high priest for no reason, just to show that he could, because he thought he was a badass. Killed him! And he was the last line of a direct descendant to Aaron. He thought, figured he would have had kids, but he was a priest. So, that just got real. Um, anyway, so the, the Jews were, were pissed. He now like, puts in a puppet priest. He's like, you're now on... Um, you do my bidding, and, he, and the Jews were mad that this priest that wasn't even really Jewish was there, and, and now and the Greeks go to Egypt, try to take over Egypt, and they're battling, they're battling. All of a sudden, a rumor spreads, Antiochus is dead. Now, the rumor took about four or five years to get back to Jerusalem <laughs> from Egypt, because again, there was no internet or like 24-hour news cycle, and you had to like tell someone, who then had to go to another town to tell someone, who had to go to another town, it took five or five years for any rumors to spread. So then the Jews heard this and they got very excited. They revolted. They killed the Greeks that were in the town. They killed the priest. And now Antiochus heard about this. Again, four or five years later after it happened. And then he comes back and he's pissed. He's pissed. He invades Jerusalem. He burns the town. He kills 40,000 Jews. That's a lot of Jews. That's like half this block. It's <laughs> a lot of Jews, 40,000. They also come into the temple, and he ruins the temple, burns the gates, he comes in and he sacrifices a pig right on the altar. And he sacrifices the pig, and he takes the pig droppings, the broth, and he pours it all over the pews and everything else. Now, if you read the histories of Hanukkah, they make a big deal about this. Even though 40,000 Jews were killed, dripping some pig on the rug seemed to be the biggest problem that they had. Because that's all they talk about in every single history. That rug really tied the room together, apparently. So, and they really, they're really taken over here. And the Greeks, Antiochus, and then they're, 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 they've taken over the temple, and they're sacrificing pigs left and right. And they're trying to feed these ham sandwiches to the Jews. Now the Jews are refusing, even though they're not charging them for them, they're refusing <laughs> to eat these sandwiches. And any Jew who refuses gets his tongue cut out, gets his hands cut off, and they get scalped. Which isn't too bad, because most Jews are pretty bald right here anyway, so the scalping wasn't a problem. But that was the choice at the time. Get your tongue cut out and your hands cut off, 
or eat this fresh barbecue. <laughs> Apparently it was a hard choice for them. I have no idea why. I would have a barbecue every time. One minute. <laughs> One minute till you get destroyed. Um, anyway. Seconds. <laughs> So you talked about barbecue sauce so far. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mikey. <laughs> thank you, Mikey. So, anyway, so then, this went on for a while, and then there was a rabbi, a great rabbi, Matiti Yahu. Enjoy that name for a while. <laughs> Matiti Yahu, and he had five sons. Judah, Simon, yeah, Simon. That was his son's name. And Theodore. No, not Theodore. I cut that joke because I didn't think it was funny, and they are correct. It was not, but thank you for joining in. Eh, not really. Um, no. No. Oh, Eliza, Jonathan, and Jonathan. There was a Jonathan and a Jonathan, which made me feel very confusing, and depending on who got in trouble, very confusing. Jonathan and Jonathan, not twins. Thank you. And then this, so their five sons and the rabbi, the Maccabees, went back into the woods. They trained, and they trained an army of Jews for months. Just a montage, Eye of the Tiger plan. They're just punching each other. They got wooden staffs. They're practicing sword fighting. This went on for about a year. And then they came back and they're like, we're going to revolt against the Greeks. And they revolted. And they beat back the Greeks. And the one Jew who actually ate the sandwich, who was going to who was gonna do the thing that the Greeks wanted him to do, the rabbi said no. And he killed him. He killed his own person because he was such a fucking badass. That's how badass this Maccabee was. And they came in and they, and they won the city back and they won the temple back and they walk up to the temple and it's destroyed. The gates are burned. It's overgrown with weeds. But they worked and they rebuilt it. And they built a new altar of stone and they wanted to get rid of the pig smell because there had been a lot of pig smell involved. So they got some incense and they got some oil. And the oil is supposed to burn for one day, as you know, but it lasted eight days. The miracle of Hanukkah. And we talk about that a lot, how not all the wars that happened and how we won back the temple, but how we saved some serious cash on oil that day. <laughs> That's the most important part of Hanukkah, apparently. So keep that in mind. Thank you, guys.